Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and click on the thumbs up for us. Give us a like. And, you know, as always, we would just love it if you would go ahead and subscribe so you can see all of our videos. All of our trips start with a beauty stop, but this trip was a bit unusual in the mode of transport that we used. We started with a bus ride up to Bangkok, up to Don Wong Airport. And as with any bus ride, there are things that you can see along the way that you might not see if you didn't have to make the ride up. And it's a fairly long ride. It's about a three-hour bus ride. And we see things along the way from pagodas to temples to all kinds of things. But the thing that I really enjoyed most were what I used to think were rice fields. They're open fields of water. They're the salt fields of Bangkok. And they basically are just salt water brought in by farmers who then evaporate it, turn it into sea salt, and market it along the road and overseas. A lot of this stuff is sold everywhere. We even get to see new temples going up, but there's just so much to see as you're going. And if you have a chance, take the time to enjoy the trip as much as the destination, because it's something that is just not to be missed. So, you know, there's the buildings of Bangkok that you can enjoy. So many different types of architecture within Bangkok, and you get to see it all when you're on the road and not driving. Makes it easier. But from there, we had to take a quick taxi ride to get to Don Muang. Don Muang is where we flew out of using AirAsia. Uh, we flew from AirAsia, Bangkok, Don Muang to Yangon. Yangon is in Myanmar, Myanmar, excuse me, which is basically, used to be Burma, um, and it's their largest city. We stayed at a hotel called the Serene Valley Hotel. Narrow pathway to get to it. It was a little hard to find, but it was beautiful. It had bamboo trees outside, wooden benches, and then inside it had a very large room. Now, our room was a little unusual in that we were actually underground. They did sell things. The picture shown is a jade picture. It's got jade in it. Um, so we went out and about a little bit and saw the sights, and there was just so much to see. So I'm going to let the music play for a while and enjoy the sights. Then I'll come back with more information when we get to a part of the video that includes the things that we were there to see. The gym museum was unusual in that they did not allow photographs inside. Now, what they did do, though, was they had a big sales shop with a bunch of little booths, and we could photograph and video there, so we took advantage of that. Our next stop was to the National Museum. From the outside, it was great. It was in the afternoon of Sad, uh, excuse me, of Friday, and we wanted to stop for some souvenirs and some food before we actually went into the National Museum. Um, the lady pictured with Janie was just fantastic. She had a great shop. Janie got some great things, and she even gifted me with a small uh, jade uh, turtle, which I'll show you at the end of the video. The food, again, the chef was friendly. It was great. The rice that you had seen was in the shape of a heart. Uh, he gave me his information. So if you're ever there, shoot him an email. Go see him. Now to the National Museum. The National Museum is a four-floor building that houses a lot of artifacts. Now, there are some things that are not allowed to be photographed. The doors are clearly marked with no phot photography, but they didn't take my phone, and they did allow a lot to be photographed. I was extremely interested in much of this stuff because it's stuff that we don't see quite that often. And it really goes to the uh, people and the traditions of Burma, from their military medals, um, to their traditional dress, which we'll get into in a little bit in detail. Um, they had so much to see 
that I hadn't seen before. And I just, I think any visitor should take time to go to the National Museum. You're going to really enjoy it. Um, the skeletal remains, the statues, statuary, and the gold is simply amazing. It really is. It was a very enjoyable visit. And I'll let you enjoy for a while. Now, jade is an important part of Burmese culture, or Myanmarese, um, and it, it makes up a lot of their jewelry, which I showed you in the Jim Museum sales shops. The statuary, these four guys were all heroic something. The guy with the rope was a heroic ra uh, wrangler, which I thought was very interesting. A pillar of four statues, just something you don't see very much. Now the museum also had a music room that shared space with masks and mannequins. The, uh, from the drums to the Burmese uh, harps, uh, it was just an amazing sight to see. And I would have loved to have had a chance to hear local music, but we didn't. Anyway, symbols, pictures of musicians, and the different types of, of music instruments. The, the one sticking up there, second from the bottom, is actually a flute. These are all stringed instruments or uh, percussion instruments. That was some food storage things. You just, you know, you carry food in them. And then the woodwork was amazing too. It, the statues are stone and they're also made of semi-precious materials, but they also had some wood carvings that were just amazing to see. Up next are the pipes. These were uh, smoking pipes that just impressed me because I hadn't seen the shapes and sizes. And then we got into some more woodworking things, including a cattle trough where they feed the cattle from. And I thought that was interesting. And now we get into the traditional dress of the Burmese Myanmarese people. There are over a hundred plus ethnic uh, nationalities is what they like to, I think of them as tribes to be honest. And each has their own traditions, their own traditional wear. Um, it's a very diverse culture and you get to see it all. I'm providing a link so that you can go and read a little bit more about it because it's, it's just very interesting to see the different clothes that these people wear. And, uh, you know, if you get a chance to see it, please do. One of the rooms that they had in this was called the Buddha Room, and it had various Buddhas to view. We went out and about after that. That was our first day, and our hotel was actually quite close to several embassies, including the U.S. Embassy, the Korean Embassy, and as you'll see here, the Thai Embassy.
from pristine gardens to different buildings. They even had a skate park that you can enjoy in this short video. We were located right next to a very large lake, Inya Lake, and it had writing on the on the ground next to it. In one place it was in English and it said, welcome. What that said, I don't know, but it was just impressive to see all the people and all the things that were there. We made our way over to the Myanmar Plaza where we had a snack. Actually, I just wanted a drink, but the owner, the lady, was kind enough to give us some samples of her goods. We met two young ladies that are language students and helped us get our bus to our next uh, venue, which was the uh, Reclining Buddha. Pastries are a big part of uh, Burmese culture, apparently, because there were pastry shops everywhere and they were outstanding. The view from the Myanmar Plaza was quite amazing. Um, you had American food stores, you had uh, Italian food stores, you had Korean pizza, which is where we had dinner uh, on Friday night. We ate at the Pizza Maru, which is a Korean uh, pizza and uh, chicken place. So it was actually quite good. We enjoyed it a lot. Jenny likes license plates, and so I had to take one picture of a license plate. Dinner on Saturday night was at the Manhattan Fish Market. The food was outstanding. I, Jenny had a, a filet. I opted for pasta with shrimp. And, uh, you know, we just really enjoyed the food there, but it wasn't really Burmese food, so... Just be aware, we can't tell you how good or bad that is. On Saturday, our trip was to the Reclining Buddha. Uh, there's certain dress codes you have to wear there, but the Reclining Buddha is huge. 16 meters tall, that's almost 50 feet, guys. And 66 meters long, that's over 200 feet. It was, and there's a lot of Buddhas, smaller Buddhas around the outside of this one. It's, uh, it, it was something that was a sight to behold. And you can see it in the pictures, but the pictures just don't do it justice. Uh, I had to rest again. Uh, that happens to me a lot. I went through several shirts and sweat soaked. But while I was laid up, Janie was out taking pictures to share with you guys. One thing I can say, the Myanmarese people were extremely friendly and kind to us the entire stay. The uh, sights that we saw were impressive, but the reason to go is for the people. The people are outstanding. We had taxi drivers that gave us ideas of places to visit in the future, like Bagan, uh, Mandalay, and Elon Lake is supposed to be very nice. But, I mean, just the temples that we saw, uh, and a warning... They don't like shorts in the temples. My shorts came to just below my knees, so they allowed me in. But be aware that you may have to wear pants, or if you have long shorts, you're okay. Or if you uh, run into a, a, a fix where you don't have the right clothes, they will rent you a thing called a longji. A longji is like a skirt, actually, but the men wear them there as part of their culture, and it will go down to your ankles. There was no fee to get in to see the Reclining Buddha. However, they did have donation boxes up for everything from electricity to patron saints, I would guess. And we did uh, donate money because we just enjoyed the view and we want to make sure it's there for other people.
In my opinion, the most impressive thing we saw was the Shwedagon Pagoda. This, it's a site that is just huge. And later on, I'll show you a map of all the things. But from the map, you, you just can't see how big it is. Now, there were two major flights of stairs to get up to it. And we weren't sure if we were going to get in because of the shorts. But they did allow us in. And I think it was 10,000 chots, which is about 750 U.S., uh, to go in. But I had, on the steps up, I had to stop three times uh, to rest. I, I just, I, by this time, I'm soaking. And you'll see a picture of me in here with my shirt on. If you look close enough, you can see it's sweat soaked. There were Buddhas everywhere. There were pagodas everywhere. The dome was just amazing to view. The size of these things was astounding. There's the main attraction, the dome there. We met a, a fine young family from America, a Hispanic family that, you know, we should have gotten a picture of them. We did not. And I regret that because we saw them again at the airport when we were leaving. They came up and said hi and remembered us from the airport. And, uh, and there's the picture of the layout. But again, you just what you need to do is look at the people and try to contrast the size of the things when you see people next to them. And it's an amazing sight. There were thousands of people there. We went in the evening after dinner, after we had the fish dinner. Um, and it, it was well worth the trip by itself. It, it's just something that um, yeah, you see people praying, you see uh, monks, Buddhist monks, but that dome lit up at night with the gold is just an amazing sight. And from these pictures, you just can't tell the size. It's, it's just amazing. And um, it's like I say, it's well worth the attendance price and well worth the trip there. Um, there are things that we saw that as Americans, you never get to see. So we're hoping this video can, you know, we can share it with friends and even new friends that will enjoy it. There's the picture of me sweat soaked. So, and then there were some young monks in training that I thought we were impressive too. The last thing we saw was the Bogyok uh, Market. This was uh, done on Sunday morning, and uh, to be frank, I was I was done by this time. We only stayed a couple hours because I was still just sweating through everything I was wearing. Gentleman with the dog was washing his dog. He let me pet her. Uh, very friendly people, very friendly dog. And the, the things to see, the things to know is Jade is super cheap there you can get jade bracelets and we got a bunch of stuff the woodworking is very impressive Janie loves see no evil hear no evil speak no evil so I had to get a picture of that and uh, I, I like dragons and things like that so you'll see a picture of a dragon a little bit later on Now let's get back to the trip home. I spoke earlier of unusual modes of transport. The AirAsia flight back was cramped. Uh, that's the nicest way I can put it. The seat spacing was very bad. Um, I, I was very uncomfortable, but it's only an hour and 15 minute flight. So it wasn't too bad. We got to take off on time. We got to get in the air and see the ground. I had a window seat, which was very nice for uh, pictures and video. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of that here.
after the landing, we had to catch a quick taxi to get to the train station because we wanted to take the train down. The second thing was the train, and it, it was a fine trip, but we never would have made it in Germany. We got to the train station two minutes before the train was due to leave. I got my ticket. We got on the train. Uh, it departed two minutes late, or we never would have made it. But we got on the train, and we were able to enjoy the ride home. Um, since we're not driving, it, you know, I can take video and pictures, and the train ride was very impressive. It was not an express train, so it did stop along the way several times. Um, the train came with sleeper bursts. It was air-conditioned, the room we got, which was very nice. But we got our lunch on the train, 50 baht per um, per meal, which is you know, two, two and a half bucks. It's not bad. Um, and we also had drinks, and we got some desserts, too. But uh, I really enjoyed the sleeper berths and the, the gentleman who was putting it up. But I also enjoyed the view along the way um, that you wouldn't see if you drove because you're going down highways when you drive to try to get there faster. Now, in fairness, if you drive, it's three hours, and if you take the train, it was supposed to be four, it ended up being five. But, you know, I'm retired, I've got time, I enjoyed the trip. That's Enjoy the journey, people, because, you know, it ends way too soon, and uh, meet people along the way and smile and have a good time. Uh, we were very fortunate. For those that don't know, they're building a second track, and that's why you see a lot of construction. This will speed up train travel remarkably. I just wanted to show you the porter actually making the beds for a lady that was uh, sitting next to us. We shared some food with her. She shared some food with us. Then she gave us two t-shirts. Amazing gift. So Janie gave her a jade bracelet back. She didn't speak English. We don't speak Thai, but we were able to communicate and share pictures and enjoy each other's company. Southeast Asia is a very crowded area, but as you can see, there's a lot of open space where people could still expand to.
And as you can see by the clouds, it's rainy season. Finally, five hours after we departed Bangkok, we pulled into the Hua Hin train station where we had to get a grab to take us from the train station home. Now, one of the rewards of travel is the people you meet and the sights you see. But for us, it's also the gifts that we buy for family and friends and in occasionally for ourselves. By the way, that's the black turtle that the, the uh, lady that was with Janie gave me for good luck. Turtles are supposed to be good luck. The bracelets are what Janie bought for family and herself. So family and friends are getting gifts from our trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll come on the road with us as we travel. Every two months, we're gonna to go to a different country. The next one up is currently scheduled to be Kathmandu, Nepal. So hopefully I'll see the Himalayas, don't know, the weather dependent, but uh, we'll be joined up there by my daughter, Paula. Hi, it's me, your host, Greg Kellogg, and I understand that we can't get to everything that you would like us to cover. However, if you leave a comment, we'll be sure to try to at least answer it in the comments. Also, if you would like and share this video and subscribe to the channel, we would really appreciate it.